Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Danny. I hope y'all are doing well. Um, I got some uh, hopefully really quick announcements. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, first and foremost, uh, I need to, you to make sure that you tell your parents to email me with any kind of information on, on how you're doing in your book. This is our last lesson because we should be done with the book by now. Hopefully you are. Uh, but I need to know where you are in the book because, as you know, Miss Danny has all the records here and I keep track of them. So now this is for TNT girls. TNT boys, you will need to email or get in contact with Mr. Newell. He's your director, so you've got to get him this information. If your uh, parents, if you're listening, if your clubber finishes the book, I really need you to, to email me as soon as they do because I need to make sure we have all the awards. And I got a really good question uh, emailed to me. When should the books be done? Under normal circumstances, I would say the last day of club, which would technically be today. But let's be honest, this ain't normal circumstances, y'all. So with everything going on, and I know it's kind of difficult, especially some of y'all that just, yeah, I'm a homeschooler and I spend months planning the curriculum and what we do. Most of y'all have just pretty much had it dumped in your laps. I get it. So if you can be done by the end of May, it would be nice. Take longer if you need to. Um, I had a clubber once that was literally finishing their book as we were walking up to the podium. Matter of fact, it was the second uh, step of the stage when she finished her trek book. Please don't do that to me. I got enough stuff going on. My nerves couldn't take it. So. Get it, get it done maybe May or June, please. But please let me know if your clubber finishes the book. I have a list of awards. I wanna make sure everybody gets their awards. As far as patches are concerned, I will give uh, clubbers, you will get your patches when I see you next time. Make sure though you bring your book, even if you didn't quite finish it, bring your book with you to when we have our award ceremony. I don't know when that'll be. Uh, be on the lookout for emails or phone calls from the leaders. We'll contact you as soon as anything's decided. Now, uh, about the Go Patches. Uh, many of you have been asking about that. Parents, if you look in the books, pages six and seven, it has all about that Go Patch. Uh, I have a list of about, I think it's 13 uh, clubbers who have earned that patch. One of the things they had to do, and I was able to get to the church to get the girls tube of quarters. Um, I couldn't get upstairs because they're in the middle of doing construction at the school, and, and I just didn't want to bother and get in, get in the middle of all that. But I'll, I'll handle it, don't worry. But deal was they had to donate one quarter, and they had to do at least one of these activities or something like it. If they did the penny drive, it counts. I'll pretty much any, you know, I'm gonna take your word on whatever they do. You don't have to follow this list exactly. You know, but I do need to know, uh, I, with the email that had this link for this video, I'm going to send out the names of the clubbers who earned the Go Patch. If, if your clubber, your, your, uh, if clubber's name is not on there and you think they've earned it, let me know, okay? And we'll get that taken care of. Uh, let's see, I think that's all of it. <laughs> it's so sad that this is our last night. I have so, I hope y'all have enjoyed these videos as much as we've enjoyed my kids helping me make them. Uh, I've gotten such wonderful pictures like this one with Juliana and her dog. I guess she's been watching this with her puppy, which is really cool because I've been hearing about some of the clubbers watching these videos with their pets. And, and, and the, the game time, we've really enjoyed doing the game time. Here's this really cool picture I got from Donovan. Uh, <laughs> he's dropping popcorn in his dad's mouth. Smart man. I like you. So <laughs> anyway, so let's get on to our, our final lesson. So we're at the end of the year here. Uh, clubbers, you're on page 246. Leaders, if you're following along in your book, 242. Uh, oh, leaders, uh, your handbooks also bring them on awards night and we'll put them up in the cabinet. Okay, so, wow, we're at the end of our book. Uh, it's been quite a year. I have to say, you know, I've been an Awana leader for over 20 years and I've never had a year like this. So this has been very unique, <laughs> but <laughs> wow. Okay, so unit one, we talked about who God is. Unit two, we talked about what the Bible is. Unit three, we talked about who Jesus is. Now unit four is discovery of, and it's different attributes. And so we're reviewing all of unit four today. So this is your last 
4.8, it's your last section in your book, okay? So the first thing we talk about in section one of unit four is God wants us to discover how much he loves us, but not just that, but also how to love others. Sometimes we need to know how. Galatians 5.14, which was your memory verse, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we're to love others as we love ourselves. You know, one of the ways we're showing, got my hair caught. One of the ways we're showing love to our neighbors is we're staying indoors. We're trying to stop the spread of this virus. Anyone watching this maybe in the future, who knows? This is during the COVID-19 quarantine. Um, and we wash our hands, we're staying indoors, we're trying not to spread this. This is how we're showing love to people around us. Now, the only thing is, is it always easy to love everybody? Is everybody lovable? No, I'm sorry, they just aren't. There's some people that are incredibly, they, they make it incredibly difficult to be loving towards. But then again, let me ask you something honestly. Are we always lovable? You know, we're not always lovable all the time either. We need to remember that, okay? When, you know, God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us love others. Because sometimes we need a lot of help with certain people. Okay, so when God's love and grace is lived out in our lives, others see it. You know, we were talking about the movie posters uh, in last, the last lesson. And that's the, how we, people see the love in our lives. And we need to let them see that. Now in section two, we talked about discovering joy. Now when we trust God and seek forgiveness for sins and try to keep his commandments, we discover what true joy is. Now again, joy is very different from happiness. A lot of people unfortunately mix the two. Happiness is a fleeting emotion that comes and goes. Joy is something inside you, it's contentment, it's inner, it, it, it's there always, no matter what's going on. Now, this comes from our relationship with a trustworthy God. We know we can trust him. Yeah, and, and too many times people base, well, I don't feel happy, so I must not be full of joy. No, joy is not dependent upon our feelings or what's going on around us. Psalm 16, Psalm 1611. Thou wilt show me the path, sorry. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At that right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, here's the thing to remember too. Life is not perfect. We're gonna have things go wrong, sometimes really bad, sometimes not. But joy, we always have, no matter what. And this kind of leads into uh, section three, where we discover peace and patience. This is where we trust God and the promises in his word. Now, what exactly is peace? God is peace, 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means, the Lord be with you all. So, you know, sometimes God allows us to go through certain struggles to help us learn patience in our lives. You know, this is where we need to focus on God. Things are going to happen. And sometimes we just need to make sure we focus on God. And peace always follows patience. You know, peace is an inner sense of calm, just like joy. It's inner. It's inside us. It is not affected or, or does not rely on what's going on around us. And we need to remember that. Too, too many times people think that it relies on the external. It's internal. Okay, now in section four, we talked about the discovery of kindness and goodness when doing good works. Now, why should we do good works? We talked about this, Ephesians 2.10. For we is his, that we are, need some coffee. Okay, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Good works, why should, we, why should we do good things? Well, because it glorifies God. It, you know, it displays our love for him and others. Now, <laughs> and, and we've talked about this before. I want you to go to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Y'all know how much I really love 
the book of Ephesians, okay? Now, is our salvation dependent upon doing good works? No. You know, too many times, you know, I've talked to people in, they, in these religions, if you want to call it that, who tell them, oh, you have to do so many good works and you have to go on a missionary journey, you know, whatever the church decides. And you have to pray so many prayers on a bead or you have to pray in a certain du direction to some city or, or you have to feed the, you know, feed the homeless. N now, those are, you know, feeding the homeless, praying, those are good things. However, our salvation is not dependent upon it. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Again, let's repeat that. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Honestly, I don't know how God could have made it any plainer than that. And it's all through, there's several verses like that through the Bible. Too many times people think, oh, I have to have certain actions in my life. No, our salvation is not dependent upon it. We do not have to do good works, but we're supposed to do good works. There's a big difference between the two. Now, as we study God's word and, and pray about it, you know, as we go through life, we're not only looking, we not only see opportunities as they pop up around us, we go out and look for opportunities to do good works to those around us. Some of us will go work in a food bank. I told you all about that with my kids. Some I know go feed the homeless. Uh, some just go volunteer in a nursing home. Some run uh, clubs for school children. So there's a lot of great things you can do for people. Sometimes it's as simple as sending a little, you know, thank you card. Excuse me. And so we have to remember good works are a good thing, but our salvation is not dependent upon it. Now in section five, we talked about discovering faithfulness when we try and we try we discover faithfulness when we trust in God and choose to follow him. Now, God has a plan for each of us. Guys, he's got this. He's got this whole thing planned and all kinds of blessings. And he's going to do what's best for us. And he's going to work out any problems. Now, here's the thing a lot of people don't realize or they forget. Being faithful is not a one-time decision, believe it or not. This is a daily choice to follow God. You've got to choose daily to do this. Colossians 1.10, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Here's the thing, you know, for following God, the more we get to know him, the easier it is to follow him. We're being faithful. We're trusting in him and we're following what he wants us to do. Is that always easy? Well, no, it really isn't. I'm going to be honest with you. But again, just like I just said, if you know him, you'll trust him more and he can be trusted now in section six we learned we were we talked about discovering gentleness and self-control now these control our attitudes and our actions now usually the bible sometimes will call it i think meekness meekness again is not weakness it's power under control you know when we're gentle and in self-control we're humble we're gentle we're putting god's desires or the needs of someone else before our own. You know, gentleness affects our attitude. My hair keeps getting caught. Ah. Okay, gentleness affects our attitudes. Self-control affects our actions. Now, these are the things that God wants us to pursue. Uh, 1 Timothy 6.11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. And when we do that, we then discuss, we, section seven, we discover God's grace. And we discover that when we grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, what is grace? Again, grace is getting something good we don't deserve at all. And what's so amazing is God offers this to everybody, no matter where you're born or when you're born or who, where you're from or how much money you have or what kind of car you drive or if you go to church every day or not go every day or how holy you are. This grace is a gift to anyone and everyone because he loves everyone and he's given us all the chance. Now we are saved through grace and the closer we grow to God, the more the results of that grace is on display in our lives. You know, we talked about this actually last week, Galatians 5, 23. But the fruit of the spirit, the results, 
is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So when we live the way God wants us to live, the, our fruit, the results of that are in our lives. You know, all the leaders, it's so funny because I was sitting here and I suddenly realized all the leaders in TNT really show these fruits. You know, Miss Elizabeth Campos, through all the incredible, the, 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 the health issues she's had in the last year or two, she has shown so much love for Juana and all of you. Even though she doesn't feel like it a lot of times, she comes in and she's so loving to everyone and all of y'all, I've gotten to some of the clubs go, oh yay, Miss Elizabeth is here. And, and, and this is not always easy for her. And she's showing great love for all of you. Miss Jamie, uh, sorry, Mrs. Becker, just the incredible amount of joy in that woman's life. You know, when she's up there teaching, whether it's in the school or in Awana or wherever, you can see the, the just the joy that she has. And, and she loves the Lord and all of y'all. Miss Debbie, tell me a person that shows more patience and peace than that woman. Uh, you know, when I'm a nervous wreck, I like to get next to Miss Debbie because she's so calm, she's so full of peace. Her calmness rubs off on me. I swear that building could be burning down all around us and she would just be cool and go, it's okay, we're good. We're good. And, and she'd just be, we'd all be calm and peace because we'd just be following her out. She's just so full of peace, it's incredible. And, and oh, Miss Angel, you know, Miss Angel's new this year, one of our leaders, she's just so in great kindness and goodness. She was looking for a way to serve. She wasn't just sitting, she saw this go, hey, this would be great, maybe I could serve here. She was seeking out a way to serve God. And she has just been doing incredible. I know y'all have been telling me how great she's been doing. Uh, and you've got, of course, Miss Kelly, who shows about faithful, being faithful more than Miss Kelly? We know Miss Kelly's gonna be there, even though on occasion she's late, just once in a while. But we know, I know we can always count on Miss Kelly. She will be there. And then we have Miss Terry. Miss Terry just shows great gentleness and self-control. You know, she puts others' ne others' needs before her own. For what most of you don't realize is not only does Miss Terry serve in a one on Wednesday night, Thursday morning she's in charge of a children's Bible study so their par their adult parents can go to Bible study. She also helps on Thursday afternoons over at the Blast After School Club. And I think she's involved in a bunch of other ministries. She's putting the needs of others before herself because she wants to serve. And, and you know, that helps when you get around people like this that can be good influences. Now, I'm not purposely leaving, boys, I'm not purposely leaving the TNT boy leaders off. I just don't know them as well because, you know, they're upstairs. <laughs> I don't know them as well. So please don't, don't think, you know, most of your, the boys, most of your leaders are like this too. But I want you to remember that, you know, our lives show, our actions show what our attitudes are. Our outside shows our inside. And we need to remember that. Um, and I hope that this year has been very informative for you. I hope this has helped you grow in the Lord. I, can't, I, I, I can tell you, it has just been an incredible honor to be your leader this year and to have all of the leaders just work so hard. This has just been an incredible year, and I won't lie, like I said, I've been doing this over 25 years. This is my 26th or 27th year. I, I, I lost count after 23 for some reason, but I think I'm in 26. But I have never had a year like this, but I have also just really enjoyed have, getting to know all of you. I hope you enjoyed getting to know me, all the new uh, clubbers. And I want to thank y'all. It's been an honor. And I hope to see you next year when we start back up. It, this is not how I would have liked to have ended it. I would have loved to have seen all y'all and tell you in person how much I love you. But we'll have to settle for this, okay? I love you guys. Um, I have a special and different game time for you. This is our last game time. So this is going to take a little bit of setting up. I'll have to film this probably that another day. But I'll have it in on this video. And if you have any questions, if you have any needs, please, you have my email, please email me. Uh, most of your parents are friends with me on Facebook. Yeah, I have Facebook Messenger or even through YouTube. I, it's, a lot of y'all have my phone, you can text me. Um, please do so. 
Also, please don't forget to let me know where you are in your books if you finish your books or your go patch. Oh, and gold and silver. If you do gold and silver, I have to know, uh, please, because I want to make sure that nobody gets shorted their awards. It's really important to me. I know that isn't the most, impo most important thing is learning God's word, but you guys really earn them, and I want to make sure you get them, okay? I kind of I have this thing about it. I want to make sure. So please let me know. I love you, and I'll be back in a few minutes with game time. Yay! Okay. Hey guys, welcome to game time. Okay, so we're going to do something a little different. Okay. Um, you know, I wanted to give you guys an activity that you could do long after one is, you know, one ends for the club year, because this is our last game time together. This is our last lesson uh, video together. So I decided that we were going to make something for you that will show you how to make something. It's Play-Doh, and this is something you can play with. Now, parents, don't worry. You know, I've made Play-Doh in the past. I'm, I'm a homeschooler, trust me. I have made batches of these. Um, this is a no-cook recipe, so you don't have to cook with it. It's made with very simple ingredients, flour, oil, water, salt, and food coloring. That's it. Now, most of these recipes call for something, uh, call for cream of either tartar or cream of tartar, depending on what part of the country you grow up in. Uh, my family always pronounced it cream of tartar. This stuff is terribly expensive. If you've made Play-Doh before, you know how expensive this is. But, you know, the reason we have it is because we make uh, snickerdoodles, which is a really popular cookie in the South. And <laughs> yeah, we need to make some more. That's the only reason we have it but it is expensive and I don't like using it. The whole point of the cream of tartar or tartar or whatever is to keep the Play-Doh soft for longer. Now, this recipe actually calls for a lot of salt. The salt kind of does that. It's a little grainy, but I think y'all will enjoy it. It's really easy to make and play with and we're gonna make some little things for you. And okay, so this is how you make it. One click. Okay, so first what you're gonna do is we'll do the dry ingredients first. This is gonna be real simple. Y'all are gonna love this. Okay, so you're gonna get a good sized bowl and you're gonna get some all purpose flour. You're gonna need four cups flour and you just put that on in the bowl. I've already got that started. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take salt, just any kind of salt, it don't matter. And you're gonna do, believe it or not, this is gonna be a little bit, but salt's pretty cheap. So you're actually gonna take a cup And a half of this. Yeah, I know. It's quite a bit, but this is still, it's like I said, cheaper than the cream of tartar. Okay, so you're going to get that in there. You're just going to mix this up real good. Okay. Just kind of stir it like you're making buttermilk biscuits. <laughs> All right. So I think that's good. We'll put that to the side. Now, you're going to need four bowls or containers. Now, if you want to be Martha Stewart, that's fine. Get them all matching. I don't have matching containers. I'm not Martha Stewart. So what you're going to need is a cup of water, warm water. Now, you need to put about a quarter cup in each container, and I've already got some in these. So that'll give you your cup. Make sure it's warm. It doesn't have to be boiling or nothing. Just, you know, warm. Okay. So you're going to use food coloring. Just a couple drops. Two, three, four. Yeah, four or five. You know, depending on how dark you want it. One, two, three, four. I'm just putting in four or five in each one. And I am, yeah, just simple food coloring. If you have Wilton like I normally have, uh, the gels, that'll work. But I don't feel like getting the gels out and dealing with them right now. So I'm just doing these that I keep them around for... Uh, crafts and stuff. Now, I know some of y'all's mamas, a lot of y'all have essential oils. Um, I actually have some that somebody gave me that's really neat. You can add um, just a drop or two of uh, essential oil um, to some of these if you want to give it a nice smell. I'm going to add it to two of them. Um, this is actually key lime somebody gave me. Um, I don't remember who gave me this, but it's really neat. Okay, so now is the vegetable oil, and it's not nothing fancy. You know, this is just what I'm using. Now, you're going to need, let's see, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. So what you got to do, do the best you can in trying to figure out half. 
I don't think this has to be exact. And you're going to put half a tablespoon in each bowl. Okay. That's simple. All right. Now, oh, I'm going to need a fork for each one. Hold on one minute. Okay. Just kind of give it a quick stir. Ooh, I like blue. Blue is my favorite color, as most of you who have been to my house know. Just a... Okay. Yep, that's it. Okay. So then you're going to take your dry ingredients that we made just a minute ago. We have all of the salt and the flour in. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take about a cup or so and put it in each container. Doesn't have to be exact, give or take, you know, honestly. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, oh, I shouldn't have thrown those forks in there. I might need them again. Oh, they're in water. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on one color at the moment. And you're going to stir this in. And if you want to add more colors, it's time you do it. In fact, I think I will. I want a darker blue. We know how much Miss Danny likes blue. Okay. Although since I'm TNT track, I should guess be more into green, huh? Oh well. Okay. So anyway, you're gonna take some flour. Let me just move all this out of the way. There. You're gonna kind of spread this out if you have a cutting board. That's fine. I'm lucky where I have these granite uh, 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 counters. And so that's really, really nice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this out. Ooh, there we go, I gotta mix the color in better. You're just gonna knead it in, knead the color in. Oh, that's kinda pretty, actually. That marble's kinda pretty. All right, so you're just gonna knead it, knead it, knead it. Okay. And... Get me a little, um, can you get me a little sandwich bag, please? Okay. So that's pretty much it for that. I'll do one more color. Thank you. Now, the way you're going to store these, if you don't store these in a sandwich bag or something, they will uh, uh, dry up. So if you do this, kind of get out of, squeeze out as much of the air as you can. And just put that to the side. I'll do one more color for you. Let's do yellow. That's pretty. I'm going to do green in just a minute. Just to give you an idea how to do this. And then I'll do the rest off camera. And I'll show you some of the creations. Some things you can do. Okay. Can't find my flower sprinkler, so i got to use my hands. If it's so dry and crumbly... I would add a little bit more water or possibly oil to it. If it's too wet, you know, add a little bit more flour and salt. The salt is the real big ingredient in this. Um, yeah, and if you add more food coloring, it'll make it darker. The salt is what's taking the place of the cream of tartar, or tartar again, how you pronounce it. Cream of tartar keeps this longer. And that's why you want the cream of tartar. Okay, I'll do the green too. My daughter wants me to do the green, but I'm adding a couple more drops to this. <laughs> Again, if you've got matching bowls, that's nice. I don't, <laughs> half my bowls are dirty and in other things. So yeah, and this makes it a little harder, but that's okay. Might get a little bit of green hand. That's okay. I'm in track. It's cool. <laughs> get all the things out of the corner. Yeah, if you've got a round bowl, obviously this will work better in a round bowl. I'm seeing right now than a square one, but this is what I got. So this is what I'm working with. Hello, kitten. I don't know if you can hear the kitten crying. She's been wanting a lot of love lately. I don't know why. She's been real needy so 
I might need a little bit of water on this one. Yeah, screen one doesn't want to cooperate. But anyway, you get the idea. You just got to keep kneading it and playing with it. And make sure you kind of coat your hands in some flour or the flour salt mixture. Now, because of all the salt, it does make it a little more grainy. Um, you can kind of feel it more. But the more you knead it, as you can see, the more uniform the color becomes. And you can just mess with it a while. Um, I know some people have rolling pins they use. If you've got any Play-Doh tools, a lot of people have Play-Doh tools. That'll work great with this. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, the more you mess with it, I have the red somewhere. Um, yeah. Okay, so there it's the red somewhere. I don't know. I just put it to the side. So anyway, and you can use all kinds of colors. Like I said, make sure you store it like that. And that way you can just do all kinds of things with it. Okay. Okay, guys, so it's really that simple. Those simple ingredients. It's cheap. You can play with it while you, <laughs> with your regular Play-Doh toys. The only thing is it is a little bit more grainy because of all the salt in it. You can use cookie cutters. You can use knives. You're spanking um, it. I would suggest uh, you can also carve with toothpicks, though we don't have any in this house. We have bad experiences with toothpicks. So <laughs> this is just like a modeling clay. Um, again, if it's really sticky, add more flour. If it's too crumbly, add a little bit more liquid because, you know, the humidity affects it. Just make sure when you store it, make sure you put them in the sandwich bags or somehow seal off or it will, it will go, you know, hard pretty quick. Anyway, this should last for about two weeks. So anyway, we love you guys and we'll see you real soon.